and welcome back to Neo Psychology with me, your teacher, Mr. Neo, the channel where I teach online psychology lessons for my wonderful students. Today we're carrying on with the unit of social influence and we're looking at lesson seven, obedience, the authoritarian personality. Let's get started. Starter. In Milgram's 1963 study looking into obedience to authority, 65% of participants administered the highest level of electric shock of 450 volts. Theodore Adorno believed that the cause of such obedience was not because of the situation the participants were in, i.e. the situational variables, but rather lied in the personality of the individual, dispositional variables. That's what we're going to look at today. Not all psychologists accept that obedience can be fully explained by factors in the situation or the social structure. They reason that there must be at least some role for the personality or disposition of the individual. After all, not all of Milgram's participants fully obeyed and some actively rebelled despite them experiencing identical situations and social pressures. One dispositional explanation of obedience is the authoritarian personality. So we're going to have a look at the authoritarian personality. We're going to look at a bit of research by Adorno et al. And then we're going to evaluate the authoritarian personality. Right, what is this authoritarian personality? Adorno et al. in 1950 believed that unquestioning obedience is a psychological disorder and tried to find its causes in the individual's personality. Adorno et al. concluded that people with an authoritarian personality are especially obedient to authority. They... Exagger uh, they have exaggerated respect for authority and submissiveness to it, so they submiss, and express contempt or hatred for people of inferior social status. Authoritarians tend to follow orders and view other groups as responsible for, so for society's ills. When I think of an authoritarian, authoritarian personality, I always think of Lucius Malfoy from Harry Potter. God, I'm such a loser. Right, um, because he he obviously has loads of respect for people that are above him in the social status, you know, whether that be Voldemort or whether that be uh, Cornelius Fudge or whoever the Ministry of Magic is. And they have absolute contempt and hatred for anyone below them. For me, he is the quintessential authoritarian personality. Now, authoritarian personality forms in childhood through harsh parenting, extremely strict discipline, expectations of absolute loyalty and impossibly high standards and severe criticism. It is also characterised by conditional love. Parents' love depends entirely on how their child behaves. For example, I'll only love you if, okay, or daddy will only love you if you do this, right? That's conditional love. These experiences create resentment and hostility in the child, but they cannot express these feelings directly against their parents because they fear reprisals or punishment. So the feelings are displaced onto others who are weaker. This is known as scapegoating. Which approach is being used to explain this personality? You know, from the approaches that you learned in the approaches, Julian, what do you think? What type of approach is this, this authoritarian personality? Right. It's a psychodynamic explanation. All right. It result is it's it's based from childhood experiences. Right. The authoritarian personality. Get the definition down, please. It's important to have definitions. Use them in your exams. Use them in your essays. It shows you're a higher caliber student. What is the authoritarian personality? I hear you ask. Well, it's a type of personality that what a type of personality that Adorno argued was especially susceptible to obeying people in authority. So if you have this authoritarian personality, you are more likely to be obedient to authority. Such individuals are also thought to be submissive to those of a higher status and dismissive of those of a lower status. Here's an application question, Caleb's granddad. Caleb's granddad is the old fashioned type. As far as he's concerned, there are good people and there are bad people, and that's all there is to it. 
He thinks the youth of today are a bunch of wasters and what they all need is a spell in the army. He longs for the days when we had strong leaders who knew how to get things done. Caleb has also noticed that his granddad talks with a lot of respect about his old bosses from work. They don't make them like that anymore. You'd uh, you'd do anything for them. Caleb often wonders why his granddad thinks like this. From what you know about obedience, how would you explain to Caleb why his granddad has these attitudes? From what we've learnt, how would you explain this? Use those key terms, please, in your answer. Quote parts of the question in your answer as well. And I'm going to go through it now. It could be that Caleb's granddad has an authoritarian personality. This means... He has an extremely submissive and respectful attitude towards authority at the same time as having complete contempt for anyone he considers weaker or lower status. This is likely to include people from ethnic minorities as well as gay people, possibly. It is possible that Caleb's granddad was harshly treated by his parents as a child. They may have held impossibly high standards for his behaviour and administered strict discipline when he failed to reach them. And that's the authoritarian personality. Identify one thing you've learned about the authoritarian personality. Why do you think learning about this is important? What was the hardest part to understand about the authoritarian personality? And what question has this raised for you? If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments. I'm sure someone will answer them. And that's the authoritarian personality. Let's have a look at Adorno et al's 1950 research. What did this find? Here's the procedure. The study investigated unconscious attitudes towards other ethnic groups of more than 2,000 middle-class white Americans. Several scales were developed, including the potential for fascism scale, also known as the F scale. Examples from the F scale rated on a scale of 1 to 6, where 6 equals agree strongly. So those people that had a high F scale, obedience and respect for authority are the most important virtues for, ch for children to learn. 6, agree strongly. There is hardly anything lower than a person who does not feel great love, gratitude and respect for his parents. Agree strongly. If you said, uh, if you agree to those, you might end up high on this potential for fascism scale or F scale. Authoritarians who scored high on the F scale and other measures identified with strong people and were contemptuous or had hatred for weak people. They were conscious of their own and other status, so hierarchy, showing excessive respect and, def uh, and deference to those of higher status. So they were very respectful to those that were above them. Authoritarian people also had a cognitive style where there was no fuzziness between categories of people with fixed and distinctive stereotypes or prejudices about other groups. Individuals with an authoritarian personality are more likely to be obedient to authority, even when asked to perform terrible acts. So, um, those that scored higher on the F scale showed more of an authoritarian personality. Um, feel free to use your phone uh, and follow the link below and complete the F scale quiz and you can find out how much of an authoritarian personality you are. There we go. And that's Adorno et al's 1950 research. Identify one thing you've learned about Adorno, uh, Adorno et al's 1950 research. Why do you think learning about this is important? What was the hardest part to understand about that research, about the F scale? And has this raised any questions for you? And there we go. Second learning objective done. We're going to move on to discussing and evaluating the authoritarian personality. What are some of the strengths and limitations? of the authoritarian personality. There's supporting evidence that authoritarians are obedient. Elms and Milgram in 1966 interviewed 20 fully obedient participants from Milgram's original obedience studies. They scored significantly higher on the F scale than a comparison group of 20 disobedient participants. This suggests that obedient people may share many of the characteristics of people with an authoritarian personality. So there is supporting evidence for this. Authoritarians can't explain a whole country's behaviour though. 
millions of individuals in Germany displayed obedience and anti-Semitism behaviour during World War II. But they can't all have had the same personality, this authoritarian personality style. It seems unlikely that the majority of German's population had an authoritarian personality. A more likely explanation is that Germans identified with the Nazi state. Therefore, the authoritarian personality cannot explain the atrocities of World War II. You can't say, oh, well, the reason why World War II happened is because uh, all those Germans uh, that became Nazis had an authoritarian personality. That can't be the case. So that's a limitation against the authoritarian personality. Final evaluative point, education affects obedience and authoritarianism. Research suggests that education may determine both authoritarianism and obedience. Research, for example, Meidendorp and Melloen in 1990 have found that less educated people are consistently more authoritarian than well-educated. Milgram also found that participants with lower levels of education tended to be more obedient than those with higher levels. This suggests that instead of authoritarianism causing obedience, lack of education could be responsible for the, uh, for the authoritarian and obedience. So this is a limitation because it's an alternative explanation on why people obey. Summarise each evaluative point into your own words. If you want to challenge yourself, get it into exactly 10 words. And that's the evaluation of the authoritarian personality. And that's the lesson done. That was lesson seven, obedience, the authoritarian personality. Next lesson is lesson eight, resistant to social influence. Well done, my neuropsychologist. Great job today. I've been Mr. Neo. God bless and peace. Feeling like well, I feel like a prince, I'm feeling myself. I'm loaded with bills, cause I was blessed with no uncle Phil. Don't know how it feels. I wanted to flex, they told me to chill. I'm making a flip, my life is a flick, now load up the flip. Yeah.